Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve the problem. Convert the block diagram to signal flow graph and find the transfer function using Masson's gain formula. So this is our given block diagram. We have to convert this block diagram to a signal flow graph. So the basic step is you have to consider your input R of S as one node and output C of S as another node. And apart from that you have to take each and every summing point and branch point as nodes. Right. So this is our first step. So when you look carefully this R of S is your node 1 and this summing point node 2 and this summing point node 3 here node 4 and here there is a branch point right so i am taking this as node 5 and another branch point node 6 then another summing point node 7 and here there is a branch point that is node 8 and finally the output is taken as node 9 apart from that when you look carefully you see here there is an in this line Okay, in this line there are two branches. So, this is a node, right? A node is an interconnection of two or more points. So, here in this case, I am taking this point as node 10. This is the important thing in this problem. Okay, the rest of the remaining things we will make it correctly. But we will forget to take this one as a node. So, this is an important step. So, make a note of it. Right. Then, the next step is... We are asked to, we are now going to draw the signal flow graph, right? So here, from this diagram, I am going to draw this signal flow graph. So as I already said, we are having totally how many nodes? We are having 10 nodes. So just draw the nodes, that is 1 to 9 in a straight line. And the 10th node is below here downwards. So after drawing this nodes, we have to draw the respective signals that flows between the nodes right so here you see between 1 and 2 there is nothing so we have to write it as 1 and between 2 and 3 also nothing we have to write it as 1 and again between 3 to 4 there is g1 so here write it as g1 and again between 4 to 5 there is nothing right so 1 and again between 5 to 6 there is g2 so here write it as g2 and between 6 to 7, again it is G3. And between 7 to 8, it is 1. And from 8 to 9 also, there is nothing. You have to write it as 1. Right. Then the next thing is, you see, from node 5 to node 7. Node 7, that is G4. So, from 5 to 7, you have to write it as G4. Right. Then, from 10 to 4. Right, from 10 to 4, it is minus H2. Because that is a block H2 and this H2 is get connected with the summer with a negative sign. So, you have to write it as minus H2. So, from 10 to 4, it is minus H2. Then again from, you see from the same node 10 to 2, that is nothing. We are having a unity feedback, right? With a negative sign. So, here we have to write it as from 10 to 2, I have to write it as minus 1. Right. Then, again from 6 to 3. From 6 to 3, I am having H1. And this H1 is with a negative sign. So, here I have to write it as minus H1. Right. After drawing the signal flow graph, you just, uh, what to say? You have to check whether all the elements in the blocks had appeared here, right? When you see, you see G1, G2, G3, G4, then H1, H2 and there is a unity feedback. So, here also G1, G2, G3, G4, H1, H2 and again with the unity feedback, right? This is the next step. Then the next one is as usual, we are going to calculate the forward path gain. So, from the signal flow graph, as I already we have seen in many problems, a forward path will consist of arrow heads which moves forward. So, just our first forward path is just you can take this one. It starts from node 1 and it ends with node 9, right? So, here you see this is your first forward path and this forward path consists of elements which has arrow heads that moves forward, right? So, here I have drawn this 
first forward path. So what is its gain? We have to just multiply the values. So when you multiply the values, you will be having G1 into G2 into G3. So just multiply G1, G2, G3. This is your gain of the first forward path. And the next one is check whether you have any other forward paths. Right. So here when you look at this diagram carefully again from 1 to 5 and from 5 to 7 and from 7 to 9 there exists another forward path. Look from here to here all arrowheads move forward and here also this arrowhead moves forward and here this arrowhead moves forward. So this forms your second forward path. So here second forward path you have to calculate the value of gain. So the gain is you have to just multiply G1 into G4. So this is your gain of the second forward path. Right. So again when you look at the problem just check whether any other forward paths are possible. There are no forward paths because the signal flow graph you see it consists of arrows in the reverse direction. Okay. So we are having only two forward paths here. That's all this step gets over here and the next one is finding the individual loop gain. So here I have again drawn the diagram to find out loops. So here just check as, your, as I already said loop is nothing but a closed path. So here in this case you should observe carefully because here we are having lot of feedback paths. So the first loop I am taking is I am considering the loop here which starts at node 2. And ends at node 10. Just you see. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And from 8 it goes to node 10. And from 10 it again it reaches this node 2. Okay. A loop starts and ends at the same node. So here I have drawn this diagram separately here. From 2 to 8 and then to 10. And finally it again reaches 2. So I have to write the loop gain value. So just multiply the values you will be having G1 into G2 into G3 into 1 into 1 into minus 1. As we are having minus here. So the final answer will be minus of G1, G2 and G3. Right. And we move on to the next loop. So again when you look at this diagram you can take this path. That is 3, 4, 5, 6. When you take this one you see. This is the path. And from 6 it again returns to node 3. So here I have drawn this diagram separately. And now we can write its gain. Right. G1 into G2 into minus H1. So minus G1 G2 H1 is the respect to loop here. Right. Then the next loop is. I have considered. I have taken the nodes. From 4 you see. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and again it reaches 10 and again it com comes back to 4, right? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 and 4. So here I have drawn that loop separately, right? So this is our loop. So how to calculate the gain? Just multiply the values. That is minus G2, G3 into H2. So minus G2, G3, H2 is the respective gain of this loop. Then again, when you look at this diagram, here we are going to find some other loops. You just take this path, that is 2, 3, 4, 5 and, and next, that is no 6 included. 2, 3, 4, 5 and from 5 to 7 directly. And then it reaches 8 and then it reaches 10 and again it reaches the node 2. Hope you people are clear right. You see when you look carefully 2, 3, 4, 5 and 5 to 7 and from 7 to 8, 8 to 10 and from 10 to 2. This is your another loop. So here I have drawn this loop separately. Okay this is our loop. So how to calculate the gain? Just multiply the values here. So when you multiply how it will be? G1, G4 into minus 1. So this will be minus G1, G4. Right. And the next one is we are having another loop. Again with the same thing. Just when you take the consideration it is this path right. 
so this here uh, you can take this one this diagram so when you consider this one it starts from 4 it reaches 5 and 5 to 7 8 and finally 10 and finally it reaches 4 so here this is your node 4 5 7 8 10 right so these are the respective nodes and here we have write down the values so what will be the gain for this loop it will be minus g4 into h2 right so this is your respect to loop gain so here in this problem we are having totally five loops and we have calculated their individual loop gain right then the next thing is we are going to calculate the sum of gain product of non-touching loops right so as i already said two loops are said to be non-touching when they do not have a common node they should not have a common node anymore so when you take this loop you see it includes uh, loops 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 10 okay even if you look at the graph here okay no need just take this loop and compare this loop with the other loops so here you see when you compare this one here it has 3 4 5 6 here also nodes 3 4 5 6 are present and again here also you see 4 5 6 nodes are present Again, when you consider the other two loops, here also they consist of, you see, 3, 4, 5 and here also 4 and 5. So, when you compare each and every loop with another loop, they always have a common nodes. So, for this problem, we won't have possible combination of non-touching loops. There are, that is, there are no non-touching loops possible for this signal flow graph. Right. And the next one is, so, our step 3 goes like that. Gain product of two non-touching loops. Here, no such combination is possible. So, we can write it as no such combination is possible. Right. And the next one is calculation of del and del k. So, here what is the formula for del? Del is nothing but 1 minus sum of individual loop gains. So here we are having 5 loops. So I am writing it as L1 plus L2 plus L3 plus L4 plus L5. So which is equal to 1 minus L1. So here I have write down the values. So here just substitute the value of L1. So L1 is minus G1, G2, G3 and L2 is minus G2, G1, H1 minus G2, G3, H2 minus G1, G4 and next one is minus G4, H2. Right. So, when you bring this minus sign inside, you will be having 1 plus G1, G2, G3 plus G2, G1, H1 plus G2, G3, H2 plus G1, G4 plus G4, H2. This is your value of del. Right. And next one is we are need to calculate the values of del 1 and del 2. Here we are having totally two forward paths. So we are asked to, we are we should find two values of del that is del 1 as well as del 2. So when you consider this first forward path again this is your first forward path okay and this first forward path almost covers all the nodes and there is no possible combination of formation of any loop with which forms which do not touches this forward path there is no loop without touching this forward path right so the value of del 1 is 1 again when you consider this second forward path again there is no loop which can be formed without touching this second forward path so again here the value of del 2 is del 2 should be taken as 1. So here the value of del 1 is 1 and the value of del 2 is also 1. Right. And the next thing is you yeah, have to substitute the values in this formula transfer function. So again 1 by del we are having two forward paths. So we have to write it as p1 del 1 plus p2 del 2. Just substitute the values. So, which is equal to, what is the value of P1? P1 is the gain of your first forward path. So, the value of gain of the first forward path is, it is nothing but G1, G2, G3 and the value of del1 is 1. Plus, again, 
for P2 the value will be G1, G4 and the value of del 2 is 1. The whole term divided by del. So here the value of del is 1 plus G1, G2, G3 plus G1, G2, H1 plus G2, G3, H2 plus G1, G4 and plus G4, H2. So this is your final answer. I hope you people understand this problem well. Thank you.